Um, as we all know by now, um, despite 90% of Americans agreeing that some form of universal background check should be law, um, it failed in the Senate and in Olympia as well, it did not get a vote. But when 40% of all legal gun sales are taking place at gun shows on the internet or through more informal sales between you know, private sellers and buyers where there is no background check. So that's, that's not even an accurate figure. Well, let's say it's 20%. Well, uh, you can pick let's any number out there you want yeah, to. Whatever it is. Uh, you, you still are going to have criminals deliberately violating the law. They're not going to go through background checks. The background check that we have now is not a universal background check. There are exemptions for uh, private transfers. That's in the uh, federal law. It's been that way since 1968, I think, Federal Gun Control Act. The private citizens who engage in that sort of thing at gun shows or gun ranges where, you know, Joe sees Sam and, hey, Sam, you got the gun for sale. How about if I buy it from you? And Joe knows Sam. He's known him for 20 years. Neither one of them have a criminal background. There's nothing wrong with that. Why shouldn't that loophole be closed? It's not a loophole. Well, yes it is, and I'll tell you why. Um, tracing is, is basically going back to where the gun is manufactured to the first uh, wholesaler, then the retailer, first person retail. With that then, ATF or other law enforcement go back and at least find out where that, that crime gun ended up in, in you know, the bad guy's hands. That's a lot of data from that. From that data, I, I, my job was to identify where guns coming from, where they're going, what, um, how we can stop this. It's a private transaction between two individuals under existing federal law, that's not a loophole at all. But here's the deal, when you start talking about the legislation, if 90% of the American people are saying we need universal background checks, and the NRA and their spokespersons also said that a few years ago, then there is no logical reason why you wouldn't have universal background checks to give somebody the thing that can cause the worst possible thing to happen to come to pass. Either we value life or we don't. It shows you the degree to which our government process lacks of political courage. When you are in the U.S. Senate, the, the, supposed to be the greatest deliberative body in the world, you not only account to your local constituency, but you are also, when you take that oath of office, you are supposed to deliberate on the issues as they affect the broader nation. Getting to universal background checks, what is the justification for not permitting universal background checks? I think the public has a misperception that we're not doing background checks now. We are. I go through a background check every time I get a firearm to uh, do a test on. And I, I test, well, a lot of firearms every year. When I'm done with that firearm, I ship it back to the factory. It goes ba right so back to them. why not close the gap? Well, okay, you're talking about a gap, and I think we've all discussed that you know, the gap uh, is created by a lot of people who don't obey the law to begin with. Criminals don't go through background checks. They simply don't. Uh, well, the stupid ones do, and they get caught, but they don't get prosecuted. Tina, background checks, is sure. it a waste you, of time? No, absolutely not. And I think that there's a lot of things that have been said here that we need to talk about. The first is um, rights. We don't have unfettered rights. Our rights do have responsibilities and restrictions around them. To, so to say, in the context of the Second Amendment, that we can't put any rules around gun ownership, that we can't put any rules around gun usage is ludicrous um, at best. When you talk about background checks, Background checks and closing that loophole for gun shows and private purchases, it's not a panacea. It's not designed to take guns away from every bad person on the street, but it will take it away from some, you know, felons who are buying guns in these private purchases, felons who are buying guns over the internet. Um, it will take it away from individuals who uh, might have mental health issues, who shouldn't be have access to guns in the first place. Will it take it away from all of them? No. And I think that that's really the point when we talk about uh, the, these background check issues. It's just one step, one aspect of, of an entire strategy to look at this issue around guns and gun violence in the United States and responsibility. I don't want to take away anyone's right to own a gun. I don't want to take away their right to own 50 guns if that's what they want to do. But I want to make sure that it's responsible. I want to make sure that they know how to use that gun. I want to make sure that they're storing that gun safely. I want to make sure they understand the laws around those guns. You're not going to stop crime 100%. You're just not. You know, you're not going to uh, stop a lot of things 100%, but can we get way better than we have been? Sure we can.